are Group J. My name is Craig Clare. And I'm Matt Cloisey. And I'm Will Lewer. Dylan Newcomb. Uh, so our project is here. Um, it's designed to peel onions automatically. And so this, process, this project came about when our friend Matt uh, was cutting onions and he noticed that he started tearing up. And so we started discussing what we could do to prevent this. And um, our interest really sparked because my parents own a restaurant and they're not just cutting one onion, they're cutting up to 50 pounds of onions at, like every time they are cutting onions. And so we need a, a way that we could hit that niche market where it's not just at home where only one onion is being cut at a time, it's where um, close to like 100 onions are being cut. And so as we did our market research, we noticed that there are machines out there that automate the process of peeling onions. However, the issue with this are they're too large for a restaurant use. There were some that even, there's a chair for the operator to sit on. And so we knew this wouldn't work for a restaurant. So we started designing a product and um, this is what we came up with. Um, our original design, our initial prototype, always was based on this idea of the cylinder pushing the onion through some knives and through some cutters to make it peel. And initially, um, we had some different ideas that had to be adjusted throughout the process. Uh, one of those was that we wanted to use a metal, metal cylinder, but we realized for friction uses, uh, purposes and stuff, we had to avoid that. Um, we also um, had to add some extra supports here to hold it down from um, the force that was pushed through it. And our original design also included a smaller motor, but we went with this one after uh, conducting some experiments where we used a foot uh, fish uh, scale and we pulled the onions through the knives and peelers. And um, that way we were able to find a properly sized motor for this process. And then some of the uh, performance goals we had for our project is uh, we wanted uh, the onion to be peeled in 15 seconds or less, and we have achieved that in this design. Um, and then we also wanted the onion to be peeled 80%, um, and that's in regards to just the outermost, the, the skin, the, the flaky skin, as well as the outermost fibrous layer. Uh, because, you know, when people use onions to cook, they usually remove both, both of those layers. So we wanted to be able to, you know, have one run through our machine and have at least an 80% peeled onion as a final product. Um, and then a lot of our design constraints were based around the goal of having it uh, being able to be used by one operator. Um, so we wanted, you know, it uh, to be less than, we said, 12 kilograms, which was really just what we thought it would be easy to lift, and this is you know, easy to lift by one person. We also wanted it to be uh, less than a meter long, and this design is actually 76 centimeters, so we got that uh, requirement. As well as uh, width and height, we both wanted uh, 30 centimeters, and our width is 25 and our height is 26. So we were pretty happy with the size of our uh, final product. Um, and in, additional, and in addition to only needing one user to operate, we also wanted our design to be easy, easily cleaned. And we kind of um, made that happen by just using a simple tie rods and uh, nuts that can easily be removed. And these two pieces can be taken off those rods and really thrown in a dishwasher and be cleaned. And also this, this rod can be unscrewed and this whole cylinder can come out and you can fit your whole hand inside the cylinder and wipe it out with a rag and soap if you would need to clean the inside as well. Um, and then one more final design constraint that really determined kind of our final design were uh, the size of these two pieces. These two pieces come from um, a product called the Alligator Onion Peeler and that's uh, a product um, that's operated by sticking an onion on a spike and then pulling down one layer, which first has the knives, and then the other layer has the peelers. Um, so we ordered that product and took off just those two pieces, and we wanted to make sure those fit onto our cylinder and our tie rods. Uh, and lastly, we wanted uh, our, our project just to be safe, safely used by one person. So the shaft we have with the spike, uh, we used uh, 3D printing material instead of a metal spike because we thought that might be a little more dangerous. Um, and then some risks that we encountered in our project were first part ordering. Uh, we used McMaster Car to pretty much order all our pot parts and we didn't run into any issues there, thankfully. 
uh, we got most of our parts within you know the one to three day window which was which was great um, another risk was just a defective design um, so we had this idea of what we thought might work but we had to continually make adjustments like adding more support legs and the support rings as well as changing our design design of the shaft a little bit and that was just really to meet that requirement of 80% of the onion being successfully peeled. Um, another risk Will's going to talk a little bit more about is 3D printing, but we basically 3D printed the, the cylinder, the black cylinder you see here, as well as a white shaft you see on the inside, as well as kind of that half of the cylinder. Um, so we tried to get those parts designed as quickly as possible and in the 3D printers as soon as possible because we thought there might be some tolerancing issues there. Um, and lastly, it was just part failure. Uh, during testing was a risk. We didn't want our, sh our shaft to snap or, you know, maybe one of these uh, either blades or peelers to snap. Um, luckily, we didn't have to uh, deal with that risk. Uh, so a crucial, crucial part of this project was ensuring that the onion would successfully go onto the shaft uh, by virtue of the spike. And the alligator peeler that we used for these two green pieces that you see, uh, it actually came with a spike. But one of the standards that we used with this project was the NSF ANSI commercial powered food preparation equipment. And that mandates that there can be no fasteners in the food zone, where food zone is defined as any part of the product that's you know, in contact with the food at any time. Um, so that led us to design the piston shaft as one solid piece, which we decided to 3D print. Um, so there would be no fasteners around the spike to the rest of the shaft. Um, so since we decided to 3D print it, we knew that it would be a long and possibly un, unsturdy kind of design. So what we did was we designed it through SolidWorks and we ran it through an engineering analysis, a uh, SolidWorks analysis, where we ran a buckling test. Um, and in that test, we added a 20 pound force to the tip of the spike. Um, and that value we got from our initial test, which Craig talked about, where we pulled it through with the fish scale to get the force needed. Um, and through that test, we found 18 pound force was needed, but we ran up to 20 just to be safe. So, back to the analysis, we added a 20 pound force to the tip of the spike. Uh, we added pressures to each of the faces of the spike that kind of comes with, along with when it's in the onion, the onion's exerting pressures on the faces. Um, then we added fixtures to where the, the other end of the piston shaft is attached to this piston head. Um, so the surfaces that are in contact with the bolts, we added fixtures so it would stay stationary there. Um, and the results of that test were that there was a maximum distortion of one hundredth of an inch, which is pretty minimal. Um, but you know, if it does actually buckle, we, you know, that would be a problem. But since we could 3D print it pretty quickly, we decided to 3D print it anyways and see how it performed under real situations. Um, and so another issue we had with 3D printing was tolerancing. And as Matt mentioned, we 3D printed this black piece, which you can see, this flange that goes on the PVC pipe, and that connects to the other 3D printed part here. And then also we 3D printed the shaft, which I just talked about. Um, so to get around the issues we had was, we had to sand a few parts. So we had to sand this black piston head down just to, just to be a smoother fit within the in the PVC pipe and this 3D printed part. Um, but after a few minutes of sanding, it proved to be not a huge issue. And then we also had to sand down the flange that was printed. Um, so we were able to force fit it onto the PVC pipe. Uh, we did not use any adhesives to attach the flange to the PVC pipe. Um, it was kind of unnecessary because we had a good force fit in there and it's, it's been sturdy enough to hold thus far, so. Um, so our budget for this design project $276. Um, like Matt said, we ordered most of our parts from McMaster Car and one item from Amazon, totaling at $125.80, which, which puts us well under our budget. Um, we have several proposed uh, prototype upgrades, the first of which is uh, our shaft. As of right now, our shaft is, um, is 3D printed and there's a crimp design um, on the spike to uh, increase the surface area so that the onion won't be, the shaft won't be driven through the onion at the point of peel. 
So our proposed upgrade would be to design and machine an aluminum shaft um, that has a flat surface about three quarters of an inch down the spike, and it would uh, increase the surface area so it won't be driven through the onion. Um, and we would also, at this point, with a with a metal shaft, for safety reasons, we would add we would uh, I guess program or uh, configure the motor to stop at the end of each cycle at the most furthest point back so that the um, onions can be loaded in consistently and safely. So out of, out of scope suggestions would be to um, add a vertical feeder here to, so you can add multiple um, onions at a time and you want to load them individually so that would increase the efficiency of the whole process. And um, so we would also add um, a slide here which would feed the uh, onion trash, I guess, onion uh, skin into the uh, trash receptacle here, and then add a basket here for the peeled onions. Yeah. Great, thank you. Is that a success?